percent of the time, uh, people in their waking lives, uh, they live in a very protective state. They live in a state of stress or in a state of survival. In fact, it's such a program that we don't know that we're doing this. We're always spanning the environment to determine if it's safe or not. And if something appears out of the predictable or unknown, it alerts us and we move into a state of arousal and we begin to turn on the very systems that begin to say danger, threat, uh, possible uh, scenario that's not uh, safe. And when that happens, uh, we literally begin to anticipate an outcome. And when we do that, we're always preparing for what could go wrong. And we begin to create the emotions ahead of the experience of what happens if it goes wrong, whether it's fear, anxiety, uh, worry, uh, sadness, pain. We do that unconsciously. That's what a program is. And that becomes the habit. So if you're living in a world where men have to provide and show a certain amount of success and be competitive, then you're not going to open your heart. It's not a time to do that. It's a time to survive and thrive in an environment. And yet, um, in our work, I see men that if they practice yeah, opening their hearts, and it's just being a child again, being a boy again, being curious, being wondering, being free, being allowing yourself to let go. And for men, we have to lay down the very thing we used our whole life to get what we want for something greater to occur. Now, the side effect of that when men truly do this, I've seen them instantaneously heal from things, from serious heart conditions where they couldn't take more than 40 steps without having an angina reaction, uh, severe chest pain, to stage four cancer. The house of cards, when it falls, energy moves into a different place and the body begins to release 13 or 1400 different chemicals that begin to restore and repair the body. So to the intellectual mind, if a man begins to understand that when they open their heart, they could heal. When they open their heart, they can lead from a different consciousness, that it's actually an advantage and they understand the science of why in their rational mind. Then they go after it. Now they're in hot pursuit of it because it makes sense to them. But there's not a lot of evidence or support in our environment for men to be vulnerable. And yet the latest research shows that vulnerability is one of the five top qualities for a great leader. So when men begin to think this through, uh, they start to slowly by slowly, just like a flower blooming, petal by petal, they start trusting a little bit more. They start opening up a little bit more. They start getting happier. They start <clears throat> breaking down the wall, the facade that they, they've created to have an appearance of being a certain way for the world and yet feeling so empty inside of them. They start realizing that, that the joy that they want never came from success, never came from wealth or popularity or whatever men do, but it really comes from within. So we give them numerous opportunities to practice, numerous opportunities to connect. and. <clears throat> the heart opens also when you care for another person, when you care for other people, when you give, when you experience gratitude. So a lot of times men, when we do our healings, when we heal other people, you got to be in your heart. And in a very indirect and sneaky way, I know that when I get men in that state and they just, their the passion to truly give, that's why they provide with such intensity, is framed in a different way, uh, the heart opens up and, and then they become more like a child again. They become free and relaxed and, and, and less rigid. Uh, so it goes against the program and it just requires a little bit of knowledge, a greater understanding, me pushing them to that point where they start really going for it and, uh, and then setting up an, enough experiences uh, for them to have it. Now by the same means, uh, you look at a person that uh, could be a female that was abused as a child. She doesn't understand why she lives her life a certain way, but it's that experience that has confused her 
or caused her to close off from feeling certain things as well. And when she gets in situations that are unsafe, that create similar emotions, she reverts back to that little child that triggers something and she doesn't understand why she does that. And so when you give somebody like that enough opportunities to feel safe, they're going to come up against that wall, that event. And when they move through it, their body is going to experience the freedom it felt before that event 30 years ago. And there'll be a complete reorganization of information in the body. There'll be a reorganization of the body's physiology. So then when you see a person then stand on the stage, who's a man who's in his late 60s, who has a severe heart condition, and he tells his story of his struggles and how hard it was for him to open his heart and how unhealthy he was and all the things he did medically, all the things he did with his diet, matter to matter, all the things he did with psychotherapy that it's really helped him to understand why he is the way he is, but never really giving him the instructions, the formula of how to get out of it. And he tells the story of what happened to him and he articulates it beautifully. And you look out in the audience of a thousand people and you see men crying because he's reaching them on some level. And he doesn't look like a movie star and he doesn't look particularly young or successful or looks just like everybody else, just a common person. And he tells the story of what happened to him during the walking meditation and how it, he experienced in one walking meditation that he could walk the whole entire beach for the first time in 20 years without any chest pain. And he was doubting, like, this can't be. What, 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 I, what happened? Well, he got so involved and becoming a different persona, a different personality, that he left the old person behind. And his body was believing that he was literally in the new life. Then all of a sudden, in a matter of seconds, his body begins to respond. Now, he articulated in great detail his doubt in front of an audience, because when that happens, you know, you start disbelieving. So he goes out the next day and he says, now that I can walk, today is the day. Why not become somebody else, become my future self? So now, in the same passion he did to provide for his children, to provide for his family, to create a good life uh, for himself and his loved ones, he goes out with that same passion, but he directs it inward to himself. He walks on that beach. I was standing right next to him. He says to the audience, in one moment, I felt the level of love that I had never felt in my entire life. And he said, and then I heard somebody screaming. And then I realized it was me, that I had never, f my, m m the energy that was in my body caused me to, I had to let it out. And he said, and, and I had never felt anything like, I was standing right next to him. And he tells that story to a thousand people. And I'm watching the men in the audience moved, like moved out of their normal self. Not, not from some Hollywood production, not some, from some movie, but evidence, evidence right in front of you. It's like the four minute mile. Once the four minute mile is broken or was broken, everybody started in, in a matter of weeks, everybody started breaking the four minute mile because it was a, we crossed the level of consciousness, a limit, and that was permission for everybody to believe it as well. That's what's happening in our work. So men then, when they watch a man have that moment, that's all they need. Because once they see it, there's evidence. Then not only do we leave a footprint in consciousness that another man can do it, a step for them in the field to step into, but when there's evidence in three-dimensional reality, you cannot forget that person. And you say to yourself, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And if he's 66 years old and he couldn't take more than 40 steps and I've got a bad knee or I'm walking with a crane or a crutch or whatever, well, hell, all I got to do is do what he did. And all of a sudden you have these people as a community beginning to unify, a living organism, 
a group of a species of human beings that are beginning to understand that there's more things that are possible and all of a sudden it becomes a collective consciousness and then the miracles keep happening so so all we need is that one person in the beginning uh, and, and when they tell their story in humility and in grace and in simplicity in curiosity uh, it, it, it gives people permission uh, to begin to step out and so I'm so proud of our community, I'm so proud of our, our culture because we have men now that know how to open their hearts and they can lead with an open heart and God we need en enough of those and we have women who have taken care of their families and sacrificed and compromised and held things together and put themselves uh, second for their children and for their family and their loved ones and never really had a moment to get clear on what they wanted. And now they're turning their love inward and they're getting very clear on their intention and uh, uh, they're doing amazing things. So it requires the balance between our head and our hearts. We can't, we can't not have our brains involved and just open our hearts. We've got to direct that energy. That's what our brain does. It's a, it's a compass. It directs us somewhere. And the emotion is the energy that drives us there. So when you have coherence in the brain, coherence in the heart, uh, now you have uh, greater effects on, on the nature of reality. It enhances your communication and quiets your thoughts. It also strengthens your immunity and heart-brain coherence. Hold the mudra with one hand or with both hands. Remain in this hand position while enjoying the video. Gently bring your ring finger and thumb together. <laughs> 